Hello viewers and welcome to our show, Aussie Wood Hard Talk, brought to you by Cool Life. I am your host Salam and before we proceed, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land on which we meet, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, and I pay my part in my respect, past, present and emerging. Today we have a special guest for you on our Cool Life TV um, during this special month. This is someone who has impacted the community and has done amazing things in our community. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome Senator Fatima Payman to the studio. Welcome Senator Fatima Payman, how are you? Thank you so much for having me, Salam. I'm doing very well. It's an absolute honor to be here uh, amongst with your audience today. Beautiful. We are happy to have you here. For those of you who might not know Senator Fatima Fahman, she is a senator within the Parliament of Western Australia. She's done some incredible work around Western Australia. She's an advocate. She's an activist. She has worked towards activating us in the community and making sure that we feel empowered, we feel heard, and it's a real honor for us um, to be interviewing her today. Okay, Senator Fatima Fahman, once more, thank you. Tell us, how are you? Thank you. I'm doing very well, Alhamdulillah. Beautiful. Alhamdulillah, that's good. Now, my questions for you today are about this special holy month. And before we commence, we'd like to get to know a little bit about yourself. Kindly introduce yourself. Where were you born and how did you end up in Australia? Thank you. Um, so I was born in Afghanistan and I was eight years old when we came to Australia um, and prior to that my father came here on a boat in 1999 to set up our family home and have it prepared before he sponsored us over uh, and I've been living in Australia ever since um, hence some people can't tell with my, my accent, accent where I'm from yeah if I can imagine and I'm sure a lot of us sim um, you know share similar stories but um, at the moment, I, you know, you've um, managed to secure yourself in the position of a senator in Parliament, Western Australia. Tell us how you managed to, to accomplish that, because you're also the youngest, um, which I'm not going to forget. <laughs> we have to address that. Um, and it's, it's a historical moment, not just for you, for your family, for your community, and for a lot of us out there who would like to aspire to be in that position one day. Tell us your journey a little bit on that. Uh, I'll speak briefly on it, but yeah. essentially it has been quite a remarkable journey uh, of advocacy, of volunteering. And I know many in the community love to volunteer, give their time to causes that are important to them. So for me, it was all about having young people involved in politics. It was yeah. about having our voices heard um, and politics was never a passion or an avenue where I thought I could see myself, but rather um, after my dad's passing in 2018 to leukemia, I wanted Sorry to contribute to his legacy and acknowledge the struggles that he had gone through to make a living for me and my family. And in, in that regard, I saw it fitting for me to be involved in spaces that Muslims or people of migrant communities and backgrounds yeah. are not often represented. And for me, that meant putting myself in positions that may made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, for instance, there was a, a pivotal moment that really changed things for me. I was in a forum and a senior white old lady came up to me and in a very condescending tone asked, how do you fit in all, all this? this. Mm. And I just looked at her very confused, like, like, what mm. do you mean? Mm. I I have all the rights to be to here be just here, like you. You do, yeah. But because she saw me as a hijab wearing young woman who might have looked a bit lost, yeah. Um, thinking that, you know, you don't belong here. I don't belong there. Yeah. And so I made it a mission of mine to put myself in, yes, um, you know, situations, in conferences, in rooms 
to be a voice for not just the Muslim community, but for young people, for people of um, you know diverse backgrounds, people of faith, people of color, uh, and of course, not amazing. to mention people Absolutely of amazing. you know uh, your working class people, because that's where I came from. You know, my dad had to work multiple jobs around the clock to put to a roof over our heads, food on the table, and pay for our education. Wow, amazing. And look, I'm sure we can talk so much on that topic. And I, you know, we would like to thank you for being a very strong advocate on, you know, trying to normalize that, you know, we're also part of the community. Mm -hmm. And there's some that genuinely might not see us fitting in, but it's also important that we have a bit of harmony within one another and we can educate each other's differences. Mm -hmm. Incredible story. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Beautiful. Now, tell us today, um, obviously, it's important, it's a very important a month for um, Muslims around the world um, and we'd like to discuss about Ramadan, right? Yes. Um, I know a lot of people say it differently. There's Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramazan. By the end of the day, it means the <laughs> same thing. So tell us um, why today or this month is very important to Muslims, uh, specifically mm -hmm. here in Australia and in WA. And before I begin, Ramadan Kareem to everyone, all the viewers who are Ramadan watching this. It is such a blessed month of observing fast, which essentially means fasting from dawn till dusk. Um, and I can run you through what a day looks like when you're fasting because uh, some people don't have the concept or the understanding no. of what fasting is. A lot of us hear about intermittent fasting exactly. or fasting where you're allowed liquids or you cut a particular diet, a diet yeah, 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 dietary item from uh, your daily routine. But essentially for Muslims around the world, Ramadan occurs once a year. It's based on the lunar calendar and lunar sighting. Yes. Um, and what a day looks like when you're fasting is essentially uh, my family and I would wake up at quarter past four in very, the morning. Very early it's in the morning. It's a.m. people, yes. not 4 p.m. <laughs> Let's uh, get back to you, right? <laughs> so quarter right past in the morning. Yep. four in the morning uh, and you'd have nutritional breakfast. So something very light, nothing too heavy. So often right. some a little bit of eggs, maybe some cheese, um, toast, whatever. Some juice. Just juices. Some uh, nourishing dates for the soul, right? Definitely helps. Nice. Exactly. So uh, you want to get up your protein levels up, but also have a few glass of water. And a tip for all those watching, put a few drops of hydrolyte or maybe a powder oh, of hydrolyte. that is a tip. I've never um, heard that one before. It really sustains you for yeah, the rest for of the, the day. day. Fantastic. Um, and so once we've finished eating, then the call to prayer, um, which is called the Adhan, yeah. goes off and we pray as a family together. We congregate, come together, pray. Beautiful. And once we've prayed, depending on the time, some of us may go back to sleep because, you yeah. know, it's super early. Super in the early, morning. yes. Um, or some of us may start work early. So um, I often try to get an hour of sleep straight after um, and then start my day at around 7.30, uh, and it would, you know, require me to either go into the office for a few in-person meetings. Of course. And then we, um, I, I take a quick break for midday prayer, the whole prayer. Yeah. Um, and I sneak in a 15-minute power nap. Good. And I that's, that's another so tip. <laughs> I think that's important. And that's the hacks. Yeah, Guys, absolutely. <laughs> um, because, you know, it's usually the afternoon slump that, you know, your just energy kind of levels just, just picks yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it dives down. And so the 15-minute power nap really rejuvenates you. Uh, and then after that, we've got the afternoon nap, uh, afternoon prayer, not nap. You're not napping all day, people. Just a short power <laughs> nap. Short power nap. Um, get on with the rest of your day. Usually I'd start um, preparing iftar, which is when you break, break fast. fast. It's, yep. it's the dinner that you prepare. Um, and it would usually be some sort of protein. So your chicken curries, maybe a bit of rice, vegetable and salad on the side. Uh, and then you wait for iftar. And during that period between the, the sunset prayer, which is uh, after sunset prayer, which is okay. maghrib, um, just before that, I would spend some time sort of reflecting, reflecting reading. Uh, yeah. reading some Quran, you know, learning new verses, contemplating on their meanings. Beautiful. Uh, and once we break fast with dates and water, 
Uh, that's ideally, when, right? Ideally, we've seen the feasts that um, yes, we have on iftars around the country. Yeah, the it idea is, is do not gain weight in yes. Ramadan. It's funny; some actually do, you know. Yeah, because especially after fasting the whole day, then if you're eating straight away all this high in protein and the carbs, you know. Yeah, deep yeah. fried samosas. Oh my <laughs> goodness! How can you stay away from all this stuff? So yeah, so it would um, you know. It, it, you definitely have to watch your diet during Ramadan. Yeah, but after, true. yeah, after breaking your fast, praying Maghrib, then we often go to um, our the the evening prayers, which is called Tarawi um, after Isha prayers. So you know you you make sure that you schedule your day throughout the five daily prayers, and that keeps a bit of Busy. a balance yeah. throughout the day for you while your fasting gives you those little breaks in between. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a very busy day. It's quite full on. I think you've really simplified it for our viewers, uh, for me personally, myself, you know, with work in between and everything mm. else that we, we do. It is a, it's, it's a day that, or a month or that we fully focus on, on Ibadah, as we call it, um, which is, you know, focusing on your faith and the impact it has on you. So that was a great insight. Thanks for that. Okay. Now, tell us a little bit why um, Ramadan is a very important uh, benefit to the community mm -hmm. or especially of our youth, especially in the 21st century. Oh, thank you. Um, and what I didn't say right there was fasting for a month, um, it brings those feelings of generosity and Definitely. compassion mm -hmm. um, and makes you think about those around the world that may not even have a single meal to enjoy at least you have a pre-dawn meal and you know breaking fast, fast. meal yeah. but uh, it is those months and the benefits that the community see throughout the year after the month of Ramadan mm -hmm. is that sense of calmness the tranquility you feel but also a sense of detox within your physical oh. body yeah. um, a lot of scientists actually uh, you know, they've, yeah. they've confirmed it. They recommend fasting. Exactly. You know, your body goes into the state of autophagy, which basically is the toxic cells eating themselves okay. up and getting rid of your body and system. Yeah. Um, and so it really is a, a time of connection for families to get together, to contemplate, to understand why they are fasting for a whole entire month. With. And like you said, it's not easy. And once you do get into the first few days especially if you're a caffeine addict like yes, me yes. oh my goodness aren't we all <laughs> the withdrawal the headaches right especially yeah. the first few days but it really humbles you before your lord it yeah. makes you realize that there is a higher being who's provided for us right. uh, and that sense of gratitude keeps growing inside of you and i think it's so beautiful for our young people to be experiencing that um and then seeing the community come together, together. for prayers yes. um and and seeing the charity organizations either doing food runs homeless shelter runs um or even donating to overseas and i know that this ramadan particularly has been very difficult, difficult. to our brothers and sisters around the world absolutely um, seeing absolutely. the plight of the palestinians and the gazans 100%. and i do want to acknowledge and send my prayers to each and every palestinian and acknowledge the people who are on the front line advocating for the rights of Palestinian people for self-determination Absolutely. and their liberation because, <clears throat> you know, the atrocities that it's, we've been witnessing just be honest, is to be honest. absolutely and it, it debilitates all of us. It makes us feel that sense of hopelessness. But, you know, this is the month where we come together. We put, you know, money in, in all these charity organizations to ensure that the Absolutely. aid reaches the, the, the Gazans who are doing it tough and um, being persecuted. and Absolutely. And, you know, I think a lot of us might feel helpless because um, we're all on our phones. We're watching what's going on. And the amount of disturbing stuff that I've seen um, is, is really, I mean, I don't think there are enough words for me to describe the impact it's personally had on me and our well-being and I'm glad those resources and technology mm. is available for us to find out the real truth about what's taking place and my utmost respect um, you know for the resilience of the people of Palestine and the families who are outside diasporas who are worried and concerned we are with you we think of you 
If there were things that we could do to make this better and easier, I'm sure a lot of us would. Um, great. Now, that was just amazing um, to hear a bit of an insight as to how a day looks like for uh, for Muslims during the, you know, the time of fasting. Hello, viewers. And uh, before we go on our break, we would like to welcome sponsorships and partnerships. And for those who are tuning in right now, this is an amazing topic we're having about this beautiful holy month called Ramadan. Um, we've got a special guest here with us, Senator Fatima Payman. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello viewers and welcome back to your show here at KTV. We still have our guests here in the studio, Senator Fatima Payman and my name is Salam Tegan. Let's continue. We have some important questions. I just want to say welcome once more. And there's some great questions that I think not just myself, but those who, who are in other faiths would like to know how Ramadan works. And I've seen a lot of friends and colleagues who are actually partaking in fasting to, to support their friends and their colleagues and those who are doing it for health reasons. So some of our questions today, I think you've already answered uh, a number of them. Um, so I'm going to continue now. A lot of us know that it is for a month. So how long is Ramadan? Good 30, 30 days? Yes. So Ramadan often goes for 29 to 30 days uh, and it's based on the lunar calendar. So we start Ramadan by sighting the moon. Yes. Uh, a lot of people and talk about it's the a moon. new moon. Yeah. So you actually don't know which day it which starts is. until yes. it's a lot closer to yes. the moon sighting. Absolutely. But um, uh, in terms of uh, every single year, we see the days shift 10 days backwards because of the calendar cycle, the lunar calendar cycle. Yep. Um, and so it's just something to be aware of because a lot of people don't know. It's like, yep, it's absolutely. not like Christmas that it's on the same, same day, day every, every single year. year. Yeah. Amazing. Fantastic. That, that was an absolute great insight. Now I can assume, you know, and a lot of people would assume that um, not everyone fasts in this period. There are times where, uh, you know, other people might not be able to fast and there are different reasons. Now, tell us um, a little bit about the people that can't fast or what situations they might be in. Yeah. So fasting is uh, compulsory on every man and woman. Yeah. Um, children are exempted until they reach the age of puberty. Um, people who may be sick, the elderly or women who may be pregnant or postpartum. Uh, they are exempted from um, from fasting, from fasting but they will need to make it up at some point. Um, also, women who are menstruating mm -hmm. or on their cycle, the seven days that you may not be able to fast, you actually make up those days after Ramadan. Absolutely. So, um, you know, it That's is a, a little, it's it's a a little bit of respite yes. for, for, the, for our for women, women out there because, yes. um, yeah, it can be really tough fasting and also having cramps and not feeling great. <laughs> Definitely. Look, I think um, some might think, you know, us women not fasting in a particular time. And please don't judge. You know, there's other things going on that we can't really explain. And um, it's really good that we've addressed mm. this. Beautiful. Obviously, um, there might be people who are on medication. You know, if you've got heart condition, mm. if you've got diabetes, you, you know, high blood pressure or mental health issues, um, you might not be able to fast. And by the end of the day, um, some of the benefits I think that you get out of fasting is also a spiritual boost. Absolutely. And if you're in the position uh, that you can't fast, then there's other reasons. Beautiful. Well, after you know a good 30 days of fasting and dedicated to prayers and you know commitment to charity and voluntary work, there is a celebration at the end of that. Eid. I believe it's called Eid. <laughs> yes. So walk us through. I think uh, there's two Eids, isn't there? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Tell so walk us through about the, the first Eid. Eid is called Eid al Fitr, which mm -hmm. is right after Ramadan. And Beautiful. honestly, it's one of the best the days best, of the year. It? Yes. Um, everyone, families, 
uh, you know, cousins, aunties, uncles, everyone comes together. We have lots of sweets. Uh, we give each other gifts, gifts. Uh, yeah. whether it's in money form or whether it's actual presents. Yeah. Uh, and you just spend the day with family and it's such a beautiful occasion. Everyone looks forward to Eid al-Fitr. Yes. And usually two months after Ramadan is Eid al-Adha, which marks the end of the pilgrimage, mm -hmm. the Hajj pilgrimage. Uh, and it is quite significant within the Muslim community uh, for us to sacrifice an animal um, uh, following the footsteps of Prophet Abraham. Um, and it is just another beautiful occasion to celebrate with family and friends. I couldn't agree more. And we have seen the celebrations, uh, the food, the culture, the dress, the the joy after fasting, you know, that many days yeah. to see the glow back on everyone's face. <laughs> That's your evidence. If you've been fasting, you'll know. Um, and we just wanted to, you know, share this amazing journey with, you know, with the people watching uh, both locally and internationally uh, that this Holy Month really affects all of us, even if we're not directly fasting. Mm. Perfect. And now, you know, there is things like intermittent fasting and fasting and let's just clear this whole doubt about us having something to eat or drink whilst fasting. What's the take on that? Yeah, so um, there are three, three rulings. When you're fasting, you're not allowed to have water, you're not allowed to eat food, mm -hmm. and you're not allowed any intimacy relations with your husband or mm -hmm. wife throughout the day. Um, after you've, you know, broken your fast, obviously That's those things story. are permissible. Yeah. Um, and it is remarkable that, you know, some people who may not be aware of fasting, they would bring you a glass of water and say, here you go. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Or it's like, you can chew gum, right? And it's like, no, no unfortunately. So um, it is it is definitely a cleansing uh, and, and quite a spiritual experience for everyone who fasts. And I'm quite fortunate to be in a position where I get to educate my colleagues in yes. parliament. Which is uh, an amazing thing. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. And um, give them the opportunity to just ask questions because yep. if, if you don't know, how can you ever have an understanding and Correct. coexist in harmony with Correct. those around you? Uh, and I've also been blessed with a very awesome team who are um, who volunteered to fast with me. That's so what I said before, didn't I? For those excellent. who are fasting with us. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and how um, are they going with it? They, they the first so day was far. quite tough. I bet. Um, but, you well know, done. Uh, it, the whole idea is for them to give it a shot, get an understanding uh, and, und you know, have that sense of connection to our community and the broader Muslim um, Muslims around the, the world. world. Absolutely. And, you know, funny t talking about taking this back to your colleagues and yeah. friends, especially in parliament, in your position, there's a lot of discussions. You've got long meetings and, you know, when you're in parliament, it can take hours. The, the exhaustion, yeah. you know, the, the concentration, the, your attention. Absolutely. How does this affect your energy and your impact? And how do you how do you explain this and walk others through that? Um, excellent question. So for me, I've always been um, a believer of clear is kind. So if you clearly explain your position, yeah. um, people actually receive it very well. So uh, all my colleagues have been very understanding. So if I'm in a committee meeting or a estimate session or if there is a, a private briefing going on, I would just look at the chair of the committee and say, excuse me, it's time for me to pray. So I would excuse myself Beautiful. or I'd say it's time for me to break fast. Uh, and some of my colleagues actually ask, what time is, what time do you break fast? Yes, so uh, and they count down with me. So oh, that's like, a blessing. Fatima, there's 30 Ta minutes to go. Yeah. Like, oh, let's go. And championing so you, right? It is wonderful to, to see that the level of understanding yes. and just camaraderie yep. that you experience and it feels like you're not alone because That's in beautiful. Canberra it can be very lonely sitting in the apartment your, all on your, on your own, own eating your little oh, porridge bless. in the morning oh, or breaking fast you should probably just go yourself. on FaceTime and get all your family to just sit in front of the camera it's so actually not a bad yeah, idea so you're not feeling alone That's yeah. my little tip um now that's amazing and i just want to say you know when we you know, thought about doing this um, interview one-on-one -on -one with you. It was to really acknowledge this Holy Month and to also acknowledge others who are really supporting us mm -hmm. in this journey during this um, fasting period. And thank you for sharing some of these amazing stories. I'm sure a lot of us are smiling and nodding and laughing. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yes, we've seen that one. And that's exactly what we want. Um, having said that, is there anything else you'd like to add um, and share with our viewers 
any message that you want to throw out um, and just, yeah, an address, feel free. Thank you. Um, I would love to say to everyone out there, uh, Eid Mubarak, if you're celebrating and uh, and you're observing fast, yep, yep. Um, please be kind. Kindness trumps all. And, um, you know, the yep. world is a better place when we all work on ourselves. So thank you for watching and having me here. It's oh, been an absolute course. pleasure. It's, it's been an absolute delight. And also from myself and from the team here at KTV, when you do watch this, we'd like to wish everyone an Eid Mubarak. And just before that, of course, you know, it's time for gifts. You didn't just come here oh, for nothing. You didn't have um, to. You know, we want to really um, appreciate you. And we do. You know, it's it's beyond words. And to, to have you here speak Thank about you. this amazing topic is, is a blessing to the viewers as well you know, and to your community as well. Thank you. And we want to give you a little gift to say thank you. And I think we just need to have you back for another session <laughs> where we talk about your full day, your journey, and, you know, some of the challenges and some of the advice that you have here for, for the youth and those who want Absolutely. to embark on this journey. Mm. Um, and having said that, let's get the gifts out and celebrate um, this beautiful moment of Ramadan thank you. with you. <laughs> بعد العسر يسرا ربنا أعلاك قدرا يا إمام الأنبياء أنت في الوجدان حي أنت للعينين ضي أنت عند الحب I just want to say here from KTV and myself we are absolutely proud that you were able to make this session with us and uh, to you know show your appreciation of um, your you know time here with us. We have a little token of gift thank to you. you know say you thank you to. for this drama that. Oh, absolutely! And remember, it's all about gifting one another, especially in this beautiful month. Absolutely. So thank something so from much. us. Absolutely, you're welcome. This is the oh, least we can beautiful. do, considering the amount thank of you. stuff that you do. No, that's thank all you right. So thank you much. so much for having me. And once again, all the viewers, stay tuned. This is an awesome channel, yes. and um, I'm so yeah. glad to be here. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Now let's have a look what you've got here. Oh, yes. Present time. We we are big on meaningful gifts that you know you can connect with, that can stay with you, um, and it's something that has a little bit of us here from KTV. I love um, myself. I love myself. Be That's kind to message. others. Oh, I didn't even did know. Did you say that before? That was beautiful. That's Absolutely. excellent. Enjoy. I love this. Thank you so much. Pleasure. And, uh, and it says a simple smile can bring out all the positive emotions in you. And that's, that's so it. true. Thank that's you. Great. I think there's another message on the other side. And the other message here is kindness is choosing to acknowledge and celebrate the beauty in others regardless of whether or not they can find it in themselves. Oh, wow, that's deep. That is that beautiful. honestly made my day. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And, you know, we hope you think of us when you're having your cup of tea and coffee. And I'm sure this is not going to be the last time we're going to meet. Um, we, I think the LVs are going to want to know a little bit more about you and your journney. Oh, it'll Thanks. be my pleasure. Yeah, Thank of course. You. Thank you. This is Senator Fatima Payman, everyone. Thanks very much for tuning in. Um, and Eid Mubarak to all our Muslim <laughs> جئت بعد العسر يسرا ربنا أعلاك قدرا يا إمام الأنبياء أنت في الوجدان حي أنت للعينين ضي أنت عند الحوض Alrighty, now here at KTV, we'd really like to have a little bit of input from you. What advice do you have for us and for our viewers? I'd love to say that uh, Eid Mubarak to everyone who may be observing Ramadan and celebrating with family and friends. Yeah. Uh, and also, this world would be a better place uh, if we all looked within ourselves and s improved ourselves one step at a time. And remember, being kind goes a long way. Absolutely. I love that. It's all about the kindness. And you've mentioned to yourself a lot of things that, you know, is very important to us.
Now, tell us, what do you think about KTV so far? KTV has really opened my eyes to the diversity of uh, harmonizing our differences and coming together uh, and sharing the, the collective humanity that we have. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to share my story. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, there are so many other brilliant stories and messages that mm. KTV has been promoting. So Indeed. hands down, it has been a wonderful experience for me. And I thank all the producers, people behind the scenes, yourself, Salam, thank for you. having me. Thank it's you. been an absolute pleasure. Beautiful, awesome. No, it's been an absolute delight having you here. Now, hello, viewers. Uh, once more, we're coming back to the end of the show. And don't forget to contact KTV, uh, you know, for awareness within your community and also promotions. If you've enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe, share, comment. Let's talk about this. Let's share it in our community. Let's inform one another. I'm your host, Salam. And I'm Senator Fatima Payman. Assalamu alaikum to you all. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Thank you. Take and care for now. for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.